Hi and welcome! Today I, Mrs. Cutevelts, together with my little helpers, will show you how to create this beautiful snail pen. Here is everything you will need. For the basis I'm using carded wool, you can see the latte tone for the body and cream tone for the base of the shell. You of course can use any color you like. Then we also gonna need some colored wools for the effects of the shell. I'm sticking the quite neutral and natural color scheme here and you can use both tops and carded wool. Please note that if you're using tops and it's really fine, you may need a little bit more of it. Other important materials are pins, wire for tentacles, I'm using 22 gauge wire, florist's tape, preferably one that matches the colors of your wool as much as possible, eyes, scissors, maybe tweezers will come handy too. Of course you need some felting mats and needles, we'll talk about them shortly, and a piece of felt. I have created a little guide for you with all the sizing, just follow the links in the description of this video to download it. You will also find this little PNG file that you can scale whatever size you want your pen to be and use as a template. Let's take our piece of felt. I find that it's easier for me to work with a felt piece that's a little bit larger than the template of my snail. As you can see, I have cut the template in two separate pieces, so I'm taking the body piece here and tracing it with a pen. You can use any pen or marker you like, nobody's gonna see this line, it's just a reference for us. I like to make my line a bit bolder, so it's easier for me to see. And let's do the same for the shell. If you can, I suggest you to use brush mat because we are going to be felting on the same place a lot and other types of mats tend to get damaged quite easily by this. Now I'm taking the wool I'm planning to use for the body of the snail and rolling it up. Make sure your roll is long enough to cover all the body you can see on the template. Now place your roll according to the template and start felting it down somewhere in the middle. It's way easier than to start from the head or the tail. I will pop the size and the brand of the needles I'm using during this video on the upper right corner. Generally I'm just using coarser needle at the start and moving on to something finer for the finishing. It's important to felt quite deep at this stage because you are not only binding the fibers together with themselves but also to the felt piece you have underneath. I will not show you all the felting in real time because it would be quite boring, but I'll make sure I include all important moments. For example, here's how you tackle the head. You just take off all the excess when you have reached the head and fold the fiber to create a round shape. Please note that I have sped up some of the process, so you can just take your time and please, please, please look out for your fingers. Another thing to look out for is bending the needle. Please don't do the things you see now on the screen because the needle can break. You can always turn your project and work from another side. At this stage I am not trying to firm it up, I'm just working on the general shape. When you reach the tail part, bend the fibers just like we did with the head and watch your fingers. When we have the general shape, it's time to move on to finer needles. I like to use needle holders when I'm using finer needles, because it speeds up the process and makes it way easier for my hands. I will link this needle holder down in the description, as well as the shops where I got my needles from. At this stage you can fix the shape, look for any places you feel like you need a little more fiber on. And besides that, we need to introduce a little bit more shaping here. Let's look at my sample snail here. You can see the head part is quite round, as well as the tail, but the foot needs to be flat. You can achieve this by controlling the direction of your needle while you are stabbing. Here I'm holding the needle just in one direction while I'm working on the foot, and you can see how it creates this lovely flat surface. And again, feel free to turn your work around and round up all the other edges. 
don't worry about the head too much because we are adding tentacles in the future so just round it up a little bit so when you're happy with the shape it's time to create this ruffled edge that is actually the part of the snail that creates slime I find it easier to turn my project upside down hold my needle towards the edge and keep stabbing Please note the direction of the needle is diagonal, but I'm not bending it. When you're done, you should have quite a fluffy edge down there. It's caused by your needle going through the edge. So now, when you're pushing it right back in, please do not stab too deep. Keep your needle quite shallow. Okay, here I am all done with the fluff, but I want to soften the edge up a bit and make it a little more cartoonish. So you can see, I'm taking the edge pointing my needle in one direction and just stabbing, stabbing, stabbing till I get those little notches there. You can do the same for the other side of the foot. And now we have arrived at the last step of creating the body, adding some darker colors. And wool fluff is just the best for this. It makes really natural effects when blended by tiny tiny bits. We are done and let's move on to the shell. Now let's take the shell base color and roll it up in a little bit larger roll than before. And we are also folding one end to make it way bulkier than the other one. Let's felt it for a little bit just to make it hold its shape. This may go a little bit faster for you if you wrap it tighter. My hand muscles aren't the greatest and wrapping is a little bit of a problem for me, so it's going slowly. I'm gonna stop here, it's quite squishy. Just don't felt it till the end because it will make it harder to make the spiral later. Before we do that, let's add some colors. I'm adding quite a bit of this caramel tone. You can wrap it around or just lay on the one side of your roll. It's your choice. I find it easier to wrap it and it blends quite well this way. Then I introduce other colors, one by one, placing them however I feel that moment. They will blend in the base color a lot especially if you're using finer tops, so you will add more and more colors later, don't worry. I try to make as straight lines as I possibly can and just secure all the wool with a couple of steps. Okay, now it's time for the fun part. First, flatten out the thicker end of your roll. Now place it like this and secure it down with some pins. Use as many as you need. Now fix it using thicker needle. I'm stepping quite deep here, going through all the fluff to the felt to entangle fibers to each other and to the base. Don't worry too much about the edges, now we are just fixing it in the place so we can create the spiral. It's actually time to finally do it, so hold all the felted parts down and twist the roll like this. Go slowly, one step at a time, one curve at a time. Just hold it down with your hand like this and felt the first part a bit more. It's important to really secure it before you move on, so just take your time and step, step, step. Here you can see how I'm securing the part that touches the felt before I make another twist. Make sure you're not going on to the body too much. And again it's important to go in diagonal, because you don't want to flatten it all out. So at this stage I'm avoiding felting just from the top. And again use both needle and pens to secure each part of the spiral. I also tend to squish the parts of the spiral closer a bit in many parts of the process to make them more realistic. 
The shell won't be as big as it looks now because the roll is a bit squishy still, so keep that in mind. At the end you want to create a really tight twist. If you find that you have a really long end of the roll, you can do exactly the same what we did with the head. Just take off all the excess, nobody will know. Now it's time to felt it all down. Please keep in mind the direction of your needle because we want each part of the shell to be round. Squishing all the parts together a bit more will help with this greatly. It will also reduce the spaces between the parts and that's the look I'm going for. As I already mentioned, the color details tend to blend in and disappear a bit, so you can always add some new ones. To add more dimension, I'm adding a little bit of darker tones in between the parts of the shell. So after felting quite a while, I'm here with the finished shell. I love how different it turned out from the previous one. So let's move on. Here I'm using my little template again. There is a 3 cm long line that I'm using to cut my wire for the little tentacles. To help the wool stick to the wire more easily, I'm covering it with the florist's tape. And again, please excuse my struggle, my fingers are trying their best. I'm taking a little bit of the wool I used for the body and wrapping this little wire. Rubbing it with your fingers will help it felt better. Then I'm carefully using my finest needle to secure the fibers a bit more. This one is a little more risky move. I'm holding the wire in my hands and using the needle in the same direction as the wire. It's working because the barbs on the needle are still able to catch the fiber and to tangle it together. Once you feel like it's belted enough, it's time to bend it in a little U-shape. Place it at the front of the head and secure it using a piece of wool placed in between those little tentacles. Felt really well just above and below the wire. Then take the remaining unfelted wool and split in two. Take each half and wrap around the base of each tentacle. Felt it down really well here. Add more wool if necessary. We are back at the template again. Now you can measure either two wires or one twice as long wire for the eyes using the longer line here. You will notice that the wire seems a bit longer than the tentacle for the eyes, but don't worry about it, you will understand it shortly. Again, we need to wrap it with the florist tape and then with the wool in the color of the body. Twist it between your fingers and felt with needle a bit. Once you're happy with the felt, just bend it in half. Now it's time to attach it to the head. It's quite low, so if you need, use the guide I have provided with this video. And we are securing it with the wool just like before. You just need a little bit more fluff here. I like to create a little bit more volume at the back of the head to make it more round and the shape more interesting. And don't forget about wrapping the base of these tentacles, it will make it look way more natural. I believe you can clearly spot the difference here, so we need to fix it. Now just take the eye tentacles and roll them in a spiral as tight as you can and stop when you feel like the tentacle length is just right for your snail. Now place your snail facing down at the edge of the mat. Choose medium or more coarse needle and felt all those fluffy bits down. Be careful not to hit the wire. Yes, I know the result is not looking pretty right now, but don't worry, I'm taking the wool and covering it up to create those smooth domes. Just wrap it tightly and flat on the one side and dome shape on the other side and carefully needle felt all the fluff down. 
I like to get it out before I apply the eyes, so you can do that now. I won't be showing you how I attach the pin and the backing, because it's just a boring process. I can show it another time if you would like, just let me know in the comments. I'm removing some of the fuzziness using scissors, but you can also finish it off using some kind of textile medium that helps with the fuzziness. I am using extremely coarse needle that I got in one of my starter kits a while, while ago, but now I'm using it for eyes, so I'm making a hole in each of the eye tentacles, just right in the middle. As we need just a tiny bit of the glue, I find it easier to put it on a piece of felt and then dip my eye in it and place in the hole. Now it's the best time to clean up all the excess glue. Always check the back of the eyes, sometimes you need to cut down the little wire or felt a little bit of wool on there. And that's it for tutorial. Please share will you be making these pins and tag me if you do and share them on social media. Now here is a little movie my husband really wanted me to include. Enjoy!